Good evening, everyone. It's good to be with you all, and uh, especially those who are also joining us via Lark. Uh, we're happy to, to be with you tonight. So by the grace of God, we will be starting a, a new chapter in our devotion for 1 Corinthians. And we will be looking at chapter 2. So now let's go to the Word of God and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Looking at verses 1 to 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. And I will be reading from the English Standard Version. Hear now the words of God. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know not, nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we recognize our inadequacy that apart from your Spirit, we cannot discern nor listen nor believe and understand the word of the cross. As you have said in your word, this is folly to those who, who disbelieve this message. But we are grateful that we are able to come and believe in this wonderful grace of Christ. And so, Lord, we ask that you would speak to us this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, in the season we're in, I'm sure a lot of you are quite busy getting invitation and even attending yung mga Christmas parties na, na nare-receive natin, as in, wala daw si Vince, okay? For a company, may team party, tapos mamaya meron tayong party with the division, bukas meron tayong party with the group, and let's say, pag naging, pag naging free si bossing, magkakaroon kayo ng Christmas party on a weekend. But what is interesting with, with these kind of parties, a lot of the activities that are being done on those days are not really related on, on the essence kung bakit nila celebrate yung Christmas. And in the same way, there are a lot of things that the church, due to the world's influence, may be tempted to apply, but has nothing to do with the church's mission. And so what, what we would like us to, to talk about tonight is Christ and Him crucified. And so looking back at chapter 1, we understood the, the situation in the church of Corinth, that there is quarreling, there, there are division, there are factionalism. Um, uh, each one of them, sabi nga ni Apostle Paul, have their own preferred apostle or preacher, which shows that they have brought in or have given in to the wisdom of the world at pinasok na leon sa church. And because, of, because ganun mag-operate ang kanilang culture, they give allegiance to their, to their biases and yung mga favorite orators sila na pumupunta sa kanilang city. Which in effect confused what the gospel meant and what are the implications as we believe it. And because of this, the Apostle Paul argued and argues that this kind of wisdom is incompatible with the wisdom of God. And in this chapter, Paul continues to argue that this form of wisdom, by recalling his ministry with them as an illustration. So, binabalik ni Apostle Paul na ito ko, ito yung conduct na, na ipinakita ko sa inyo, I was with you in weakness, and he is also saying that you've seen this wisdom in the Gospel of Christ, you have experienced this wisdom in your own respective conversion, and now let me remind you of it in my ministry. So, verses 1 to 2, sinabi niya rito that his message is Jesus Christ and Him just who he is, but also what he has accomplished on behalf of his people. He also simply proclaimed that uh, the gospel of Christ in an unvarnished and untainted way. So he simply proclaimed the gospel. And verses 3 onwards, the effectiveness of his message does not rest in his capability, but in the spirit and power of God. And this is a great reminder para sa atin church. The message we bear is not derived from human ingenuity or even human achievement. This is the testimony of God when we proclaim the message of the gospel. It calls us to be faithful in proclaiming the message that is entrusted to us. We simply receive 
this message. And in the sharing of this message, as we proclaim it to our family, friends, and the people that we know, we must cast aside any form of reliance in our own ability, recognizing that it is the power of God who changes the lives and converts a sinner into a saint. And so my, my simple message for tonight is that the Christian message rests upon the wisdom and power of God. The Christian message rests upon the wisdom and power of God. And we will be looking at two things for this evening. Number one, the message. And number two would be the means. So let's go to the first one, the message. And here we would see that the Apostle Paul reminded the Corinthians that his ministry centered in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you would look at Acts chapter 18, verses 4 to 5, aside from being a tent maker by trade, nakita po natin yun in the passage, Paul was occupied with the word. He tried persuading and testifying to, the, to, to both Jews and Greeks that Jesus was the Christ. And we see here in verse 1, And when I came to you, brothers, did not come, proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech, or wisdom. And if you would know, and I think the cover na to in the past sessions, that the culture had great regard for rhetorical display. And if you want to get the attention, you just have to make a very good impression. Craft speeches na talagang may entice si mga crowds and, um, and provide great insights na hindi pa nila narinig ever before. And as he proclaimed the testimony of God, he did nothing of those things. Sabi niya, hindi niya nilagyan ng lofty speech or wisdom that wisdom that comes from the world or, or yung mga gawa ng human opinions. But in verse 2, he says, For I determined, or I decided to know nothing among you, NASB pala yun, though. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And so in other words, he resolved to focus his attention on the gospel. Paul did not meddle himself or got himself busy to understand ano ba yung mga human opinions na pinag-uusapan nila in the church of Corinth because it is irrelevant. Hindi siya importante sa gospel. There were no lofty speeches, no fancy forms, hindi na nagmatter kay Apostle Paul yun. No human wisdom, which means that the content of his message is not of human opinion, but the wisdom of God. And so the same message na sinabi niya na it is foolishness to those who do not believe. It is moronic in the Greek. According to the world standards, is the same message that he proclaimed to the people of Corinth. Why? As the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Sinabi na rin niya in chapter 1, verse 18, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And to proclaim the gospel in worldly wisdom or with human opinion is to render our message powerless to save the laws. And Paul knew na hindi na nila kailangan ng isang opinion. Hindi na nila kailangan ng additional insights that are coming from uh, human beings. They don't need another mesmerizing speech. In fact, sobrang dami na nila nun. Meron na silang surplus ng mga kung ano-anong wisdom that they're talking about there. What they simply need is the gospel of Christ. And therefore, he proclaimed it boldly. Doon siya nag-center, he focused on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And when we preach a gospel that is not centered upon Christ, we are doing a disservice to people because we are not actually giving them a good news. And because of that, faithful gospel proclamation exalts Christ's person and work. In making known Jesus Christ, alam natin na hindi siya huminto doon, Paul preached about His person who Jesus is, that He is the Son of God who came into this world, born of a virgin, to save sinners. And by adding, by Him, or and Him rather, crucified, Paul preached about His work that He has accomplished on behalf of His people. And so we're not saying na dapat hinto natin yung, yung um, any efforts in making the gospel understandable. Hindi, hindi natin sinasabi yun. But we must all, instead, we must always strive for clarity. Kailangan maintindihan nila that God is holy, that we have sinned against this holy God, and therefore we are rightful recipients of the wrath of God, and we ought to be condemned in judgment. But the good news is that, but God 
uh, sent His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life, to die on the cross for our sins. And the very great news is that we can hold on to this good news because buhayan Diyos. He, he has risen from the dead and He is alive. And so we can trust Him. But faithfulness to this message must never replace by style or be mixed by human philosophy. One of the services na naging very popular or very relevant during the pandemic is the courier services. Merong color green, merong color orange, merong color pink, merong color red. Any kinds of color you can choose from. Um, tapos very accessible na sila via the mobile device, di ba? And the responsible of the courier are two things actually. Number one, it gets to the recipient. And number two, it gets there safe. So, minsan ginagawa pa nila, they do a lot of packaging, uh, may mga bubble wrap and all. But in proclaiming the gospel as witnesses for Christ, we only have one responsibility. That one responsibility is to give it to the sinner. is to proclaim the unvarnished truth of the gospel. And because this is the message of God in Christ, the gospel, the only message we ought to proclaim to a dying world, our challenge is that we must recognize the futility of the world's wisdom and hold fast to the gospel of God in Christ. Human wisdom would always try to exalt man. And this is contrary to, to uh, the wisdom of God, which is marked by humility, suffering, self-denial, repentance and faith. At kapag pinresent natin ito sa mundo, they would really think na, mga siraulo pala itong mga ito eh, bakit, bakit tayo maniniwala sa mensaheng may namatay para sa kanila ng, kumbaga parang capital punishment, bakit, bakit ko paniniwalaan yun? And if we mix human opinion, we will actually end up denying the gospel because we will mix it with our own opinions and yung mga ideas natin that we want to bring into the gospel to make it palatable. The Great Commission, and go and make disciples of all of the nations. We don't talk about the Jesus of this world, the meek and mild, the great moral teacher, the, the one that is being uh, preached by the social justice movement, but we preach the God, the God the Son, Jesus Christ of Scripture, Christ and Him crucified. And as a local church, we don't offer help para sa ating mga kapatid by pop psychology, self-help, or any books that is available sa mga popular bookstores natin, but we point each other to the Holy Scriptures that would in turn remind ourselves of what Christ has done for us and the blessing we have received by virtue of His grace and the imperishable hope of glory that is to come for everyone who believes in Him. And so as we carry out this task, note also na hindi po tayo nagre-rely sa ating own abilities or capabilities or skill. And this is the second point that I want to talk about, the means we carry out our, our mission, the means. And here the Apostle Paul depended only in God's of his ministry. In verse 3, he said, I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And looking at this offhand would make us assume that the Apostle, Paul, the Apostle Paul is simply commenting on his demeanor or yung appearance niya. But nakatakay kasi even the commentators have, have uh, varied on their opinions. But I think based on the context, Paul was trying to make a contrast of his manner as he carried out his ministry as compared to the orators, the philosophers who are coming there with a polished style and technique of giving their crafty speech. And so, kung ikukumpara mo si Apostle Paul, ganito siya, Exhibit A, and Exhibit B, yung mga regular orators, you would actually see a night and day or day and night difference. And so, yun po yung sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, and he boasted in his weakness. And, and you would see him talk about this in chapter 12, verse 9, nung, nung he was praying to God to take away the thorn in the flesh. Sinabi, sinabi ni Christ sa kanya, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And therefore, sabi ni Apostle Paul, I will boast gladly of my weakness. And so, in his weakness, he boasted. And not to mention, thus far, medyo marami na siyang mga suffering na, na pinagdaanan. And so, mar- marami siyang way of really boasting in the Lord alone. And in verse 4, he says here, My speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, 
Again, Paul did not apply the commonly applied techniques during their age. I've read in one commentary na they would even act it out na para mag, mag, nasa teatro sila para just to convey effectively the message. He didn't show cleverness in rhetorics because he was not there for a performance. He was there for a proclamation of the gospel. Rather, his method was to, to demonstrate or in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So Paul recognized that the effectiveness and yung, yung power in the ministry doesn't come from his own ability, but in God, the Holy Spirit. Demonstration in the Greek is the word, which, is, which means showing of proof. It is a word that, that conveys the idea of presenting a legal evidence in the court. And so, ang ginagawa ni Paul dito, he's just coming in as a, wit, uh, as a witness. The basis is the word of God, yun yung evidence niya, that is the testimony of God. He plainly preached it to his hearers and God accompanied his message to bring about the result that it intends. And may rin natin yung intent ni Apostle Paul dito. It is not to draw, draw attention to himself, but to ensure that his hearers would really ground their faith in, in the power of God. No one could say that they were saved by, because of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Sinabi niya rito in verse 5, so that your faith might not rest on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And no one would, would show favoritism to him because he is simply preaching the word of God and the gospel. And truth is, even if he did, kung mag apply man siya ng mga rhetorical techniques, matalinan tao si Apostle Paul. It doesn't take um, a hard time for us to understand that he has a skill in rhetoric. Just read the book of Romans. Just read the way he, he presents his argument. Pero Paul in himself will not be able to produce saving faith unless God the Spirit would work in the lives of people who hears the message. And the point is God alone can bring about the result of our witnessing that man in his own ability could not do. We plant the seed, we water the ground to make sure na mag-cultivate ito, but it is God who is the one giving the growth. And we see this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. He is um, opening this letter. To he says, For we know, brothers loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel, the testimony of God, came to you not only in word, but also Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. And Paul came with the gospel, and God, through his preaching, accompanied it with power and conviction to his hearers. And we know that dahil nakita natin yan in verses 6 to 7. He says here, And you became imitators of me, of us, and of the Lord. For you received the word with, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. We also see, see this in other epistles to the churches where the gospel has been proclaimed. In chapter 1, sinabi niya rito that you are enriched in Him with every gift of grace. Sinabi niya sa Corinthian church. Philippians chapter 1 verse 5, partnership. Yung Philippian church has been partners with Him in the gospel from the first day that, that they've heard of it and believed the gospel up until that time. And Colossians chapter 1 verses 4 to 6, sinabi niya rito that the Colossian church have demonstrated faith in Christ, love for all the saints, hope in heaven, because they've heard a better argument? Hindi. It's not because they believe in another ar argument or opinion, but the Spirit of God effecting the results upon the hearers of His Word. One commentator said, a faith that depends upon clever reasoning may be demolished by a more acute argument, but the faith which is produced by the power of God can never be overthrown. We're, not, we're also not saying that we shouldn't apply our gifts when we proclaim the gospel of Christ. Na bahala na lang, hindi, na, hindi na, natin dapat gawin yun. Men like Charles Spurgeon or even George Whitfield were gifted orators. And these men, although ginamit talaga nila greatly ang kanilang gift in speaking and proclaiming the gospel of God, hindi nila ginamit yung rhetorical display as a way for them to draw um, his hearers or to even draw large crowds. Rather, they used it 
trusting that the Spirit of God will work in the lives of people. If God is all-powerful, all-wise, and He is, and that even the greatest wisdom of men is foolishness before Him, then there's absolutely nothing that can throw off the faith that is produced by the power of God. And far it be from us, brothers and sisters, na iisipin natin that our methods, our abilities, our skills are the be-all and end-all of our ministry. And so my challenge is that be confident in the word of the cross that draws sinners to the Savior. Because it is the Spirit of God working through the word of God that enables man to, be, to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to know that it is true and have a firm conviction upon it, and to rely and trust in Him. And if saving faith is dependent upon human performance, then dapat siguro marami tayong time na ini-spend in really preparing a production dahil yun yung talaga magdadraw sa ating mga crowds and would essentially make them believe. Iisipin natin na ganun if it depends upon human wisdom. But of course, we know that it does not. Often the problem also, very, very subtle lang ito, is that we trust on what we can actually do. Some would resort to, to various methods, kung ano man yun, thinking that it works, then might as well do it over and over again. Apply lang natin sa ministry. That's essentially the, the, the cry of pragmatism. Whatever works, whatever sells, and whatever is enticing to the crowd, and whatever is pinakabenta sa mga methods natin, just keep on doing it because it works. And sometimes we've learned so much, we've gained a bunch of experience already na yung mga upcoming tasks natin for the word of the Lord, for the work of the Lord, is kumbaga parang hindi na kailangan prayer or even dependence upon God. Wag, natin, wag sana mangyari sa atin yun, church. We must be reminded that it is God, the Spirit, who moves and re- really has the power to change the lives of people. But instead, we must recognize that the best of our abilities cannot accomplish the work of God. The church must be found faithful in its commission and calling as saints by trusting God's wisdom in Christ and relying solely upon the Holy Spirit in bringing about the desired results for His glory. And may it be to that end, church, that we would really trust and um, depend ourselves upon our God as we carry out His mission to the lost world. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, in our because we have a message to hold on, something that we have received from you, Christ crucified for sinners. And O oh Lord, may we not resolve to making it fanciful for the sake of drawing attention or even gaining a bunch of crowd, but rather may we proclaim this message clearly with conviction so that so that our, the hearers, the people that we know, our family, friends, and everyone that is around us would really know about the gospel. And as we do so, Lord God, we pray that you would work. We pray that you would bring about the change in their lives. May you cause them to repent of their sins and place their faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, as we pray tonight, may we just uh, really devote this time to you and recognize that all this, these things that we are lifting up to you, we, we recognize, Lord, na kayo po ang aming sandigan, kayo po ang aming masasandalan, and that in you we ought to put our confidence. Oh Lord, we thank you for this time. We pray all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.